Um, and is there anyone new that needs to sign in to add to our election committee? Have anybody that's not signed in before? Okay, there's a sheet there, if so. Uh, and uh, I, again, just want to welcome everybody. And as usual, I'm sure there'll be people that will um, come in after we get started a little bit. Uh, before we go any further, I just wanted to welcome our guest tonight, Craig Miller. And uh, he'll be speaking. You can have a seat if you okay. want to for a minute. This looks like I'm an important chair. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hot seat with wires. I'm ready. Well, I, I think I gave my sheet to somebody else. Don't you know <laughs> This is it. Thank you. Yes, that's the one with the notes. Uh, so let's start with a prayer. Uh, and do we have anyone who wants to volunteer? Me. There you go. <laughs> and one left over from lunch. <laughs> okay. There you go. Hey, join me. This Heavenly Father, we praise the name of Jesus Christ. And we bow our hearts and our heads in the presence of the Almighty God. Lord, touch our tongues with the burning ember of coal that would allow us to speak truth in love to each other. Bring us together in one accord, Lord, understanding that we are caring about this. Pledge. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And I wanted to, of course, uh, introduce Pete and Doreen, who are the co-chairs of the election committee and do a lot of work behind the scenes and a lot of uh, research and a lot of organizing. And uh, I think that what we'll, you know, what we have talked about rules of the, well, I'll read the rules after, or I'll let one of, the, one of them can read it. We'll read the rules after Craig gets finished. So basically, how many of you went to the Senate forum at the mainland? Okay. So, Mr. Miller filed after we had the form. And so we were delighted to, uh, to find out that we had another candidate. And we want to try to keep it just as close as possible to the vetting that we did at the forum. So I'm going to be asking the same question. Uh, um, Doreen, uh, I think it was last Friday that we decided that we would contact Mr. Miller and see if maybe he could fit us into his schedule in the next month or so, and he said, why can be there Tuesday? <laughs> so we were very happy about that. That's a, that's a wonderful thing. And this is his, his campaign helper. Helper. Well, and, and he's, he's been very helpful. So you, got, you need to know that he's very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> so that's helpful. why I keep him. Yes, yeah, that's very helpful. <laughs> And so with that, what we're going to do is we, you have up to 10 minutes to give a, 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 an overview. Okay. And then I have questions uh, and that we're going to be going through. And Great. It's good to be here. Um, hey, yeah. hey, you guys, you want to come over here so you can go. Um, <laughs> thank you for coming out on, on a rainy evening this morning. We, we drove over from Orlando and it rained on us absolutely the whole way. Uh, but. Uh, I-4 and, and I-75 uh, during this time of day, uh, I don't have to tell you, so we are very happy to be here. Uh, my name is Craig Miller and I am a candidate for the United States Senate. Uh, I have a very, very simple message to bring to the people of the state of Florida, and that is that we need to replace Bill Nelson, and we need to replace Bill Nelson with a conservative United States Senator that will represent the people of Florida. And I don't believe, if you look at Bill Nelson's record, and you look at his time in Washington, that he has done anything to help the people of the state of Florida. And I think the people in the state of Florida are ready to change. I am uh, a restaurateur. I'm not, up until recently, consider myself a politician. Now, politician is not a four-letter word. It's not something we should be afraid of. Our representatives in Washington are elected by the people to go there and serve the people. I am a servant of the people, and I've done it all my life. It's one of the advantages I have in running for public service, is that when you've been a restaurateur, and you've been in the business of serving people, that you understand the needs and wants and desires and hopes for people, not only the employees that, that have worked for you. Um, and I have created and worked with companies that created literally thousands of jobs in my career. I'm a business person. Uh, 
uh, fortunately, I had an enormous opportunity given to me in life. I was born to two great parents that came from extraordinarily humble uh, starts. My dad was orphaned when he was eight years old. He came from upstate New York. My mom came from a sharecropper family in the central part of South Carolina, where she picked cotton as a child. And when you come from parents like that, you understand the greatest generation and what they did to lay the foundation that gave us all the opportunities to be successful. They taught me self-reliance. They taught me love for country and love for God. And they gave me the foundation that allowed me to literally go from the dish room where I started at 13 years old in Rockledge, Florida, to the boardroom. I took two companies public. I ran and was involved with three major businesses. My first part of my career was with Darden Restaurants, Red Lobster. I spent about 11 years with them. The longest part of my career was as uh, uh, chief executive uh, and president of Pizzeria Uno, uh, Chicago-based, uh, original founded company. Uh, I joined the company when it had five restaurants. We built it to over 200 and uh, into about a $400 million business. The last part of my career, I was fortunate enough to run with Chris Steakhouse. And I like to affectionately tell people that that, uh, that business um, where you serve people in a very special place for very special events, um, you know, was kind of the topping for me in the restaurant business. And I don't have a desire to run other restaurant companies. Uh, I've done it for over 40 years. In fact, when I entered, when I left the United States Air Force in 1972 after spending a year in, in Vietnam, in 1972, Bill Nelson ran for the first public office here in the state of Florida. So as long as I've been in, in private life, Bill Nelson's been in public life. So I figure it's time to make a switch. And uh, uh, he wants to come back to Florida and, and, uh, and work on Main Street. Uh, I'm going to go to Washington and help change the direction of our country. And gosh, do we need it. Uh, I look at the situation, I look at the circumstances that we all face. And I've uh, come to the conclusion, and it's one of the main reasons that I'm in this race, that we don't have enough people in Washington that truly understand what's going on on Main Street. They don't understand what someone like Barbara does to try to build a business, grow a business, be successful at a business, and what impediments we all face in order to be able to keep our country and our economy growing. They don't understand what creates jobs. Why? Because they never created any jobs. They don't understand how to put capital on where it's because all they've ever done is go to a, uh, a printing press and take all the money that they could get and figure out a way to spend it. And as a business person, you come from a totally different background. Politicians seem to make most of their decisions based on what's going to get them reelected. Business people and Main Street people and entrepreneurs and creative people make decisions based on what's going to be good for their business, good for their employees, and good for their shareholders if they happen to have shareholders. And if they're individually entrepreneurial and owned, good for, their, good for themselves and the future of their families. So we as business people make decisions entirely different than politicians do. We don't see a bigger example of that than what happened last week. And what's been happening in Washington, and even more, even importantly, what's been happening in Tallahassee for years. That's why you get involved in situations like kicking a can down the road and doing things, because no one is going to step forward and take the tough decisions and make the tough decisions. When you face bankruptcy in a company or, or, or serious financial stress, you know, status quo doesn't work, okay? You can't go to your bank and ask for more money when you need it. Best time to ever ask for money is when you don't need it, okay? If you ever needed money and you were in a tough financial situation, that's not the time that you can, you know, you can rely on being able to, to layer on more debt. There's so many parallels between how our government's being run and how businesses, successful businesses run. The whole idea of entitlement programs, okay? Business learned a long time ago that defined benefit plans don't work, okay? We learned them 20 or 30 years ago. We couldn't sustain our business, okay? The automobile industry learned it many years ago, okay? So what did they do? They started relocating plants outside of union-organized states where they could have the opportunity to be able to make a profit and stay competitive, okay? It got so bad in the automobile industry, however, that the federal government had to step in and bail them out, okay? That goes against everything that I fundamentally believe in. 
Because when you start in the kitchen and you work your way up and you follow other people that do the same thing and you see people being successful and you have a good understanding of what taking risk means, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. When you lose, you're held, held, held accountable for that. When you win, you have responsibilities to make sure that you can continue to be successful. We don't have people in Washington that think that way. We don't have people in Washington that even understand the premise of that, whether it's in the White House or on Pennsylvania Avenue. The people just aren't there. We elected some great new congressmen and women last time. Last time, Many people coming from Main Street, many people that had never run for political office before, had never been elected to political office. And we've seen already how quickly we can change the debate. And I tell all my friends in the Tea Party and 912 and Patriots groups that I talk to, your chest ought to be pushed out right now at how much impact that you've had. And many of you, for two and a half, three, four years, have been on this mission. Okay, The first two years were enormously frustrating because when Congress was totally controlled by the Democrats and Barack Obama, it seemed like that, that the thing was spiraling totally out of control. The advantage we got out of that is we got a lot more people involved. The room is now full rather than half full. And the meetings are now overflowing rather than having to, to, to convince people they should get involved. I'm running for the United States Senate because I'm a business person because I'm not a politician, because I've not been tainted by the process, and because I'm not looking for a career. If I spend six or 12 years in the United States Senate and I have to never make a decision that, that, that is based on the fact that I'm concerned about being reelected, that will be a huge win for me. A huge big win for me, and I believe a huge win for the people of the state of Florida and for the country. I have a family, I have three children, one grandson and another grandchild on the way. It's immoral what we have done to the foundation of our country and to think that we are going to pass that on to our kids and grandchildren is something that's unacceptable to me and I'm sure it's unacceptable to all of you in this room. That's why we're here. That's why we're on this mission. Your mission is to get people like me elected. Okay, I understand that. My mission and my objective is to make sure I go and serve represent the people that elect me to the United States Senate. That's what I intend to do. Very pleased to be here. And you guys, I've learned, because I've spoken to a lot of Tea Party groups, you guys are much smarter than, than most politicians, and most because you've been actively involved in these issues, and you understand and, you know, the reality of what's going on. Okay? That's why your voice is so well respected, in my mind. And when you hear the President of the United States, and you hear the head of the Senate, talking about the impact the Tea Party is having, okay, and the disparaging marks they made, okay? I put a smile, put a smile on my face. You should put a smile on all your face, okay? Gotcha, okay, gotcha, you know? Because they don't understand that that is the message of the people. And that's what you folks are. You are the message of the people. And so thank you very much for having me tonight. And Barbara, I'm ready. Thank you all. Doreen is passing out a, the scorecards that we used at the forum. Um, so you can just pick a column there uh, and, and mark his responses. If you remember, uh, for those of you that attended, for those of you that didn't, uh, there's three, three uh, categories there to each question. And it's uh, liberal, moderate, or conservative as to what his response might be. And so just mark that and, and then we'll, we'll pick those up later. So that we can see what everybody thinks. Um, How about honest? Is there a check mark for honest? <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, we, we, actually think, we actually think that their answers are honest. It's just where they're coming from. <laughs>